Hey there guys, TC made with TC Gaming. I haven't done a tutorial in quite some time, but with the new release of Unreal Engine 5.4 coming up, there are a lot of changes to the retargeting process. I wanted to show you something I've been excited for for quite some time is finally, uh, looks like it's at our doorstep, and it's being able to simply retarget the Cinti Polygon assets. And it also looks like Cinti has been making some progress towards getting a more compatible skeleton version on their existing assets. So I'm going to show you something that uh, I think you should probably experiment with if you get a chance. What you want to do is you want to go to the Cinti Polygon store. And inside of the Cinti Polygon store, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's a little spot here that says Free Assets. And under Free Assets, they have a thing here called a uh, Prototype Pack. It's under the Polygon... <clears throat> I'm sorry, not Prototype, but Starter Pack. And you can add this to your cart, download it or whatever, and then, you know, you'll get a an option to open up project files for that. So in my case, I have um, downloads already in here. I can go and say my downloads. And under my downloads, I can just look for that starter pack. And under the starter pack, you have options once you open this up of what you can actually download. So in this case, I would download the Polygon Starter Unreal package. And then inside of that package, once it comes down to my zip files, I'm going to have that in my downloads directory. And Cinti Polygon Starter, I renamed this. But inside of this package, you would have a Polygon Starter pack and a project and all that kind of stuff here with your content. So renaming the zip file to just something like Polygon Starter, you could right click on that and say extract files to Polygon Starter. Once that gets extracted, you can go and open this up and ask you what version. I already have Unreal Engine 5.4, the preview version, installed, so I'm going to say OK. If you haven't done that yet, you can go into your library under Engine Versions and add a new version, and it'll bring out one that will have a drop-down, and you can pick 5.4 preview from that drop-down, and it'll be able to uh, get the new files. So while this project's opening up here, this is the Polygon Starter Package, and what you'll see in here, if you're familiar with Polygon assets at all, is that they've actually done a pretty good job in creating a new uh, character that already has the bones in it the way that we want them. Now, when you go to fire this up, there's going to be an issue with the third-person character, so you can just click on this, and it'll take you into the code. We can go in here, and all that it is, if you zoom out a little bit, you'll see that there's an error here on the reset orientation and pose for your VR. If you're not using VR, you can just delete this. If you are using VR, you can fix it. Um, I'm not going to go into rewiring that right now. I haven't even really looked at that aspect of it. But anyway, you go in here and hit play. Your new character drops in from the sky, and you can see that this character has already got the motion on it from the basic pack but no ik which is not a big deal because we do have ik available to us uh, through dragon or um through uh, power ik which was made free so i'll do a tutorial on that coming up uh, pretty soon on how to uh, add power ik to something like this but we have a character in here and if we look at this character we can go to the world settings and we'll go to select a game override and we'll go and look at this default pawn class and it'll bring up the blueprint for this and under here we have our mesh, which is our SK character, male face one. We can go and find that out in the world. And it's right here. And if we go and we look at this character a little bit, our skeleton tree is pretty close or pretty similar to what we have in a regular, um, a regular character for the Unreal Engine newer mannequins, or at least the version 4 mannequin. The old problem was that the Cinti Polygon assets had weird rotations on them, and it caused a lot of problems with trying to retarget assets and things like that. But the reason I suggest that you use this project for what I'm about to do is because the bone structure on that character is already so close to being correct that what we're about to do will be so much easier in here and then you can transfer this to another project later so in this polygon starter i don't have any animation in here that i want to transfer yet so let's go get us a, a, a nice little animation package here and i'm just going to use for the sake of this i'm going to use the 
Sword and Shield Pro set. It's got a lot of animations in it. Down to my assets here. And we'll look at... Um, I think this is called Sword and Shield. Sword and Shield NM Set Pro. Add to a project. And we're in the starter project. And you'll see it's not shown here. So you have to go show all projects. And then it'll show up. And then the other problem will be that these assets are not compatible with 5.4 because 5.4 is not even out yet. So you just go and pick a new, you know, a close version, like whatever is available to you in that list. Add the project. It'll pop those in there pretty good, pretty fast. And we'll now have an SNS NM set Pro file in here. Under the animations, we have several different animations in here. And you'll see that if I play this, all I have in my preview mesh is the SK Mannequin. Okay, but what they've done in this new process, it's really cool. Again, I'm in animations in place. If I right click on this and say retarget animations, I can pick a target skeletal mesh, which in this case is our SK character male face 01. And there's going to be a couple little warnings here and there, but you'll see that all these assets are available and there's this auto generate retargeter that pops on. So if I, if I turn this on, you'll see that automatically our animations are working pretty well. And the thing I want to point out with this is it also has the hands closing properly around a weapon. You see how that has a closed fist in there? And any of the other animations that you look at, you can see that the hands are, are properly formed around what would be the handle of a sword or the hilt of a sword or whatever. Um, so with that being said, this retargeter would work better for most of our other assets. And what we want to do in this case is instead of worrying about retargeting all these uh, animations, which we could easily do with this process, um, these would only be available to the characters that are on this skeleton, though, and this skeleton is not compatible with the other Sinti skeletons from the past. So what we want to do is we want to export these retarget assets. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under Content, New Folder, and I'm just going to put in uh, Sinti, and I'll just call it RTG for retargeting. And we have a Sinti RTG folder. I'm going to say Export. And all that does is it drops a couple of files out here for us. So there's an auto-generated IK rig for the regular mannequin. There's an auto-generated IK rig for the Sinti polygon asset. And you see in here it has the hands in there. It's got the thumb, the index, and the middle. Now it's missing the uh, pinky. And it's missing the, um, the ring finger. And if you wanted to, you could put those in here, right pinky and right index. Just like there would be on here, there should be, actually not this character, but on the other rig, this one here. So you're going to have a, a pinky right here and a ring finger and a middle finger and an index finger. So you could theoretically, if you wanted to, add those additional bones in. But most of the animations that you find out there don't have that much articulation and they really only use the the thumb and the index finger, and in the case of Sinti, with a three-fingered hand, whatever you do to the index, um, they have a finger that's the basically the back three fingers, which is your, your middle, your ring, and your pinky, are all one bone called finger one. So all you'd be doing is creating a middle, you know, right middle asset uh, reference and then telling it to use those finger one right uh, from bone one to three or four or whatever it is. And, and we may do that in a second. But it also generates this IK rig, which shows us the overlay of the two characters and all the animations that are available to them using this particular rig. Now, what I want to do here um, is I want to be able to generate these animations onto an actual Sinti character from an actual pack. So what I'm going to do is go back here. I'm going to go to uh, Polygon, and I'm going to grab this Polygon City pack. It's usually pretty lightweight, and again, we'll go in here and put starter, show all projects, and use compatible from 5.3. Same process we did for the animations, add the project. Boom, it's in there. And now we have the Polygon City Pack. So in the City Pack, I also have meshes in here for characters, and they have new character. Now, new character actually has the proper bone structure in it, and I'll show you the difference. 
If I go to characters, any character in the characters folder, and I go to these pink assets where actually the, these are the skeletal meshes, if I right click on this and say skeleton, find skeleton, it's going to take me to this character skeleton for the city pack, scale character city in the polygon mesh character folder. If I go to new character and I right click on one of these, I right click and say skeleton, find skeleton, you'll see it actually, it actually takes me to a epic content mannequin character mesh for the UE4 mannequin. So the bone structure of these two are definitely a little bit different. And um, I'll show you why that's important in a second. But what I want to show you first is that because we created that RTG asset, that sent the RTG asset for this IK, what we can do is we can take this and move it over to, and again, I'm going to use the old characters for this. I'm going to go and take this IK auto-generated rig, and I'm going to drag it up into characters, and I'm going to say copy that here. And I'm going to go to that characters folder, and I should have my copy right here of the IK rig. And I'm going to call this... I'll just call it Polygon City IK Rig. Okay. Now, when we open this, this is still technically pointed to the starter pack character. But if we go to the preview skeletal mesh over here, I can pick one of the characters from my other package. And you can see I have definitions in here for the bones, for the hands, and everything. So if I create that Polygon City IK rig reference in there, now I can also go in here and right-click and say Animation, Retargeting, and go down to the IK Retargeter. And again, I'll go Polygon City, just so we can keep these straight, IK Retargeter. Uh, get Retargeter. But if I open this, now it's going to ask me for a source IK rig asset. And in this case, it's the one that we auto-generated from the Sword and Shield pack. And the, drag this down a little bit, our target mesh is going to be our Polygon City IK rig that we made. And we'll zoom this back a little bit. And you see these guys are standing like right on top of each other. So we can go target mesh offset and do like a 150 to spread these out. We're going to see some, some strange behaviors here that we're going to fix. But if I just, out of the box, play this, you can see a couple of things here. And we're going to pause that and just kind of look at it. We can see that his, his hands, his arms and everything, they're not bad, right? But they're a little, just a little weird. And uh, it's the way that his, his wrists are kind of cocked out and things like that. So what we can do is go up here to where it says running retarget and uncheck that, or just just click on it, rather. And it's going to put him back into his pose. And what you'll see the issue is the Sinti IK character, or the Sinti character, is in a T pose and our mannequin is in an A pose, an open A pose is what they call this. So what we want to do here is we want to take, we're on our target, which is this guy. We want to go over to his upper arm left. Okay, and what we're going to do, I'm going to zoom this around a little bit so that this actually goes up to the top here. And we're going to take and we're going to bring this down by 40. And we're going to do the same thing for his upper arm right. We're going to grab that and we're just going to bring this down by negative 40. So it's going to go negative 40, negative 40. And you can see already that's kind of the same angle that we have on the other mannequin. If you want to, you can go back to asset settings. You can zero this out and see with the overlay, they're pretty close as far as their angle. Right now, the other thing that we have to do though is we got to get a little bit of pitch to those elbows. And if we swing this around to the side, you'll see that the mannequin from UE4 actually has this little bend in the elbows, and the Cynthia character is still kind of straight out and stiff. So that's the lower arm. We want to go to the lower arm right, and I'm going to move this around again so that these controls are where I can see what I want to do here. So I want to go just negative 20 on these, just a little tweak. And then lower arm left, and we'll swing around here. We'll do the same thing. I'm, to swing around, I'm holding down the right uh, the right mouse button, and I'm hitting the A and the D keys and the W and S keys to zoom in and out. I'm going to take that and go in 20 there. So just giving it the same kind of you know slope and everything. So when we're done, we say we're done editing the retargeting pose. And I'm going to move my camera back around to the front of this. And you can see already it looks a lot better. 
Okay. And what we can do now is we'll go asset settings, target mesh offset, and we'll go um, 150, spread these guys out so that we can see that they are working. You got the heavy, heavy fast, and all the different combos, right? And again, if you look at this, you know, a little with a stop or whatever, the hands are closed in pretty decently. All right, so this kind of works. The reason I again I'm doing this this way is because the the starter project has a skeleton in it that is more compatible with the UE4 mannequin that most of these animations are built on and it makes building the rig so much faster. You see what I did is I let it auto generate the rig, I saved the auto generated rig and then I just pointed that auto generated rig to my other synthy polygon character which is you know totally different and if i if i want to now all these animations i can just go and grab this all the way here go up to the, down to the bottom of this shift here and say export selected animations and now what the, with this particular kit i'm not going to do that just yet i want to show you another reason why and it's because if you look at this these are mixed with in place and root and in place and root and it's the same name with two different packs in here. So actually what I want to do is I want to go in place. Now this is you're not going to have this with all the other packs that you use. You know, some of these have different naming conventions, but with this one here I can get all the in place animations is what I really want. Um because I didn't set this up to do the uh the way that it would have to be with the um, root motion. Root motion, I think you have a couple settings you gotta change. Uh, I'll take a look at that. I might do another video for it. But here's export selected animations. And I can go into Synthi RTG, new folder, and just say, uh, I'll just say SNS or S, uh, yeah, Sword and Shield um, Anims or whatever, SNS Anims. And I'll export these there. Just say export. I'm not overwriting anything. And I usually just click out here on the on the side where this is at with the left mouse click. And the reason I do that is because you see it's going to run through here. And whenever that process is done, my left mouse click will actually fire over there in that window. And it usually lets me know that I'm done there. So it tells me my assets were placed out. I can go out here to this. Let's go down here and down to content. Minimize these things out. And I have my SNS anims. And there they all are. And I'm just going to go save all, save selected. And make sure they're there. Now I can pull these up. And I have all these different animations that are on my character and ready to go. So now, <clears throat> if I had another project somewhere, all I'd have to do is just take this and say, you know, export to or migrate to another project or whatever. I can migrate these animations out or whatever. And the beauty of this is, since these animations are on that skeleton... I can now go to my preview meshes and I can swap these out for whatever character came from that same pack. So, uh, you know, obviously sword and shields with cops is not you know the great thing, but, but you see the, the process is very simple. I can now quickly retarget Sinti polygon animations and get them working the right way. And again, you're not going to have the IK bones on these things because this doesn't have the IK bones on it, but in future packs and releases, it's a possibility that they will have those on there. And what I was saying earlier about the Polygon City Pack, the Polygon City Pack has a um, set of new characters in it that has the proper skeletal structure. So I'm going to try something that we used to do back in the old day that you don't really have to do anymore, but we're going to try it out, which is, in the old day, what you would do is you'd go in here and you'd find the skeleton for this. And you'd say, okay, I don't want this to be my skeleton anymore. I want to use the skeleton that comes with this pack where my animations are at or vice versa, delete the animations skeleton, you know, drive it on the, on the character skeleton. So I should be able to swap those two over. So I could do it one, one of two ways. I could either say, okay, this polygon city, epic content, mannequin character mesh. Let's use that one. If I go down to sword and shield and I'm set pro, and I'm not sure that this will work. I'm just uh, uh, hypothesizing that it will. If I right click on here and say, find skeleton, so there's my SNS Anim Set Pro mannequin. If I go in here and delete this, it's going to pop up a thing to replace references. And I'm going to say I want to replace that with my 
UE4 mannequin skeleton that's from, that's the starter one. That's Polygon City Epic Content Mannequin uh, Character Mesh. So that's my one that goes to these other things. I'm going to say Replace References. OK. Save Selected. And we'll just see if that broke these things. And sometimes if it, what it'll do is it'll flip them upside down. So I'm going to pull this up. And now we should have our preview meshes available for our other characters. And you can see that that happened to work. Um, which, again, it's a different process. And what you've done is you've destructively destroyed that other asset, um, which technically may not matter because this is, you know, the same skeleton in general. So with that being said, these other characters, they may work with things that have IK on them, you know, in, in your other projects. Um, but again, I would look into just using the free IK tool that came with um, when they released it for... Um, Power IK, and we can we can look at that. I'm sure there's a hundred thousand videos out there for you know how to use that. But these are two different ways to get your animations onto your onto your polygon characters now, and to make your life so much easier. So I'm glad Epic is moving in the direction to make this simpler, and I'm also glad that Cinti Polygon is taking steps to get the proper skeletons on these things because. If you look, if you look through any of the content that I had there before, this was this was quite a process, and and probably ninety percent of my audience on YouTube came from Polygon, you know, having problems. So I'm I'm glad you guys hopefully have stuck with me through these uh, last couple of years, that, that your projects have worked the way you want them to, and that these new versions make things even better. What I will end up doing because the five point four process works so well is I'm going to come up with a you know something to make this even easier probably. And what I've done in the past is I've taken animation packs from all of the um, all of the Mixamo animations for certain different packs and kits and stuff, and I've taken the ones for the uh, Paragon assets, and I've created rigs for those and dumped them all out into repositories that are on my GitHub. Um, I may end up doing the same thing with the 5.4 versions to try and make this even easier for people who are just trying to get up and running pretty quick. These things can be confusing. Hopefully this made sense even though i put two different processes in there maybe i'll uh somebody index the video or something like that and i'll put the the breaks in there this may do it by itself and uh, again download that polygon starter pack for free and then you can use that to retarget or generate a rig for your other characters and again these you know you would just migrate this to another project so you can just right click and say um migrate and then you know pick, tell it what you want to take out of here and then say okay and then go pick whatever your project is from wherever your projects are, you know, and you'd be, you would have all this data in there. In the 5.4 project, this is really going to be a game changer. And there's a lot of good 5.4 stuff coming out. Go check out the channels from uh, from people like uh, Smart Poly and all that kind of stuff. I think his name is Smart Poly, but he has a he has, there's channels out there that are releasing the 5.4 uh, previews. They just did their state of view, their state of uh, Unreal address so again my name is tc made with tc gaming hopefully this helps some of you guys out and if you like and subscribe and follow i might get back into doing more content but i'm always available on my discord so if you ever have problems or whatever jump on there i quit doing videos uh quite a while ago and i'll be honest with you the reason was because i felt like everything i was putting out there was already something better out there people who had really put some time and energy into their effort uh, into the videos i just kind of throw on the mic and go sometimes my stuff might get a little weird sometimes you know maybe mine's more to the point some people like it some people don't whatever but i felt like there was a lot of great content out there that i was just duplicating the effort of and maybe not doing as good a job as other people so i just kind of pulled back from it a little bit because my goal is to help you guys not to confuse you but, um, you know, if you like the style of video and you want me to do more things, you know, feel free to let me know. So take care. Appreciate it. And I'll see you guys maybe in a future video. Take care.